and we're live. Do you hear that? Do you hear that, Mr. Anderson? <laughs> Elrond, what are. are you doing in the Matrix? Rohan and Artharin, yay, love you. What's going on, Here's beautiful my people? Steve husband, hearts and boobs. <laughs> Yeah, man. Elrond's not going to be in the new Matrix. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> kind of mm -hmm. sad about that, really. Uh, he did... I'm not 100%. He, he was doing the interview, and he was like, well, you know, I thought about it, but our schedule didn't line up. And I'm like, that interview reads like salary negotiation. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they didn't want to pay me more. <laughs> right. <laughs> So, but now they're already filming it, so uh, it's going to be a shame. What's going on, everyone? We're getting uh, ready for another weekly Daily Wednesday. I know, yes. shock showing up on a Wednesday, and you're like, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. What be this? I was told there would be no Linux. <laughs> you were lied to. <laughs> I couldn't even think. Like, if we were just doing a random live stream of something, how how to keep Linux out of it? <laughs> hmm. Well, I don't think I mentioned Linux yesterday on the stream. <laughs> True, but you were playing an open source re-implementation yes. on Linux. Yes, <laughs> very much OpenMW. <laughs> yeah. So, I don't know, like, no, even if I was streaming from mobile, that's Android. Yeah. Yeah. I have to go rob a iOS device. Mm. I wonder if that Windows tablet could stream. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it can scream. I don't know about stream. <laughs> oh, hi, Art there, and how are you doing? I'm I'm doing well. I'm just going crazy with skill preparations Artharin, it has arrived <laughs> look at it yes so isn't that nice and <laughs> Pedro doesn't believe you watch the shows on Saturday anymore <laughs> that's not what I said no that that's what that's what you meant <laughs> see that, that's why people talk to me I, I just cut through it man <laughs> There we go. Let's give Pedro a retoot. Uh... Yeah, no, uh, you, you brought up the other operating systems, mm -hmm. and something in my brain just clicked. El Cheapo has an Intel processor and an AMD graphics card. I'm kind of half tempted to try and uh, hack and dodge that bitch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what you need to do is get a hundred and sixty dollar Chromebook. Jump into the Linux support channel on uh, Discord for OBS and scream at me when I'm like, dude, you can't stream with that. A, the operating system's not supported, and B, come on. <laughs> come on. Aww. Hi, brother Jelly Bean and nephew Evan. This Saturday, we're having an LGC party and uh, a scale preparation party. So I, I had emailed them, of course. So hope, uh, have hoping. you faxed me the paperwork yet? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Ben will fly out from yeah, Georgia to go to I'm our party. I'm tired of these unsanctioned events. Um, yeah. <laughs> and now both Jordan and Arthur want me to kiss Nick on the lips. Mm-hmm. Mm. Where's the consent here? I can't ask consent of a poster. Come on. <laughs> this is why you should forever Jordan. remain kissless, Jordan. <laughs> this isn't Canada. You just can't walk up to someone and kiss them. That'd be weird. I'd get some weird looks. <laughs> Dude, you better stay out of Toronto. It's just like, you know, a, a tsunami of kiss. <laughs> Everyone's got mono. <laughs> <laughs> that and oddly um, bondage-esque um, boots. 
Spikes on him. <laughs> Platform me. Do do. <laughs> that looks bounced, so we'll be going in five minutes. Okay, time for yes. me to go take a break. <laughs> be right back. Do that. <laughs> yeah. Hurry up. I need to go too. So chop chop. <laughs> <laughs> Why has everybody been asking me how I am? <laughs> I think that's the meme. I'm not sure, but I think that's the meme. <laughs> Pedro, you've known me for a minute. Have you ever known me to have, like, a mood? Does a mood singular count? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It's like, well, you, you have like mildly irritated as my resting state. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but I mean that in a good way. <laughs> no, I, I find that that's a that's a, a good way to be because if I'm at work and I turn at someone and I have a mildly irritated look on my face, they go, "Oh, sorry." Uh, I'll come back later. Bye. <laughs> hmm. I don't know. I, I, I think that comes across. I mean, normally I'm like singing the Meow Mix commercial in my head, like looking around. Like, ah, everything's cool. <laughs> I, I'm usually like not even thinking about anything. And I just apparently I have a very serious resting face. I have uh, that, so... but that's mostly due to the neurological damage that I've had inflicted upon me as working in security. Yeah. <laughs> Partial paralysis, but hey, what else? And uh, I can't remember where I was working, but I was working and someone walked up to me. It's like, wow, you have a serious look on your face. What happened? Uh... I wasn't even paying attention. What happened? <laughs> no. Yay! Ooh, <laughs> the TV shot. It's nah, back. Dude, he's practicing. He's getting pretty good using that fancy Android camera. Is that camera stationary? Is it always on the same? It is. It's on a tripod. <laughs> thing, because the angle is always very similar. It is. <laughs> Maybe cheese just on an angle. Uh, he's about forty-five degrees askew. <laughs> oh, did you hear that? Uh, your home of Britannia is going to be tightening its immigration policy. Yes. <laughs> I mean, that was kind of the whole thing behind Brexit. So, dude. They're like, no, you have to speak English to come in. I'm like, that's going to piss off a lot of Scottish people. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, that's always baffled me a little bit. Yeah, Scottish because people when... are weird. <laughs> <laughs> no, when me and Nori got here and we went to um, the job center mm -hmm. to like register for a national insurance number and everything else. And... Um, there was someone there with a translator because they didn't speak English. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, wait, that was an option? <laughs> Are you seriously telling me that was an option? <laughs> it was your fault mm. for learning. <laughs> yeah, a after like nine years, I mean, you're going to learn the language one way or the other. Yeah. <laughs> oh, got my skill and... mug again today, Arthurin. I love this mug. It's one of my favorites. Don't drop it. <laughs> I've got, you know, a mug from every scale, but this one's special right, because it's uh, big. A nice big one. What else? <laughs> this mug's special because I bought it at a thrift store because I went to a thrift store to look around and it wasn't um, what I normally <laughs> go by and I couldn't find anything at all. That that right size? <laughs> no, I just couldn't find anything I wanted to buy. This is a spite mug. It's like, I'm buying oh. something. So this is my 99 cent mug. 
I, fe fight I, mug. I felt good because it was part of a set, so there were only five left. <laughs> yeah, that's happened to me. Go shopping and you're just frustrated, can't find anything. <laughs> and grab something. To say, I, I spent three hours doing this and I'm going to buy something. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if I ever spend three hours shopping, put me down. Something has <laughs> malfunctioned. It has gone wrong. Something is terribly out of whack. <laughs> oh, I've done six hours worth before. <laughs> yeah, uh, Steven, he gets a little <laughs> grumpy <laughs> after about an hour. <laughs> Why? Steve, what you do, it, it's called uh, uh, catch and release, man. I mean, just like, have fun. Call me when you're done. <laughs> ben just buys lettuce at Aldi. <laughs> I wouldn't one, buy produce at Aldi's. <laughs> but the thought of either one of you eating something that wasn't takeout is kind of blazing. <laughs> You have a scale mug at work? Right on. <laughs> if you missed it in Discord Yay. yesterday, everyone was having a backpack off. Yeah. <laughs> I carry this much backpack. Like, oh yeah, well I have two backpacks. I have a car. Yeah. I can't carry that heavy backpacks around anymore without killing my back. I don't carry anything. I was thinking about that. I was like... I genuinely will have a wallet, and if I'm if I'm feeling really adventurous, I'll like take a tablet out of the boot and take it with me. Yeah, that's it. Well, I don't. I know people yeah. that just like well, I got my water bottle, my laptop, and my chargers, just in case of what. Well, sometimes I have to because when you take public transportation or Lyft or Uber, I don't have access to my own car, my own vehicle. I know. Live so a I little. have to. Learn to, have to have live off of the stuff. land. Hunt. Forage. Take people out. There are other people walking with these items that you need. <laughs> yeah, so that's the only time I wear backpacks and, and whatnot. If I'm going to an event or meetups, tech meetups. So I have to bring all my stuff with me. But I'm, I've been packing lighter these days. I don't pack my big... Uh, asus rog laptop much anymore because it's that's like 30 pound backpack um <laughs> i just bring one of my chromebooks or um with a bunch on it <laughs> or one of my old think pads <laughs> now uh, i'm not saying aldi aldi a aldi doesn't have like the um best price in produce but and then Listen, man, if there's a hipster version of Aldi's, we have it in Athens. Trust me, it's built in an old fire station, okay? Oh, um, that's cool. Welcome to Athens. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's not like what you would think of an Aldi's. What do you think when you think of Aldi's, especially if they're in Britannia? It's like a little rundown. But cheap. Yeah, yeah, it's basically little in Portugal. Because mm. little here is fancy. Oh, yeah, little. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> Your pack meal? Yeah, no, the, the two Aldi's <laughs> that I've been to here in Cambridge, mm -hmm. they are tiny. And uh, they they look like they were just like a house that someone converted into a teeny tiny little market. <laughs> They're relatively not. The best thing about um, Aldi's is they sell shopping carts for 25 cents. And where else are you going to get that deal? <laughs> <laughs> See, Tesco's, the uh, the trolleys are free. You can tell because there's usually trolleys all the way from here <laughs> to work, and there's a Tesco's trolley somewhere in sight. You know, especially if you're walking around, if I'm downtown, I'll get to the point, the point of where you see one, and you're like, really? <laughs> Yeah, no, the, um, it was a couple of years ago, after we first moved in, that the river was, 
drying up a little bit, uh, so the water was very, very low, and you could see a bunch of Tesco's trolleys just lining the shore. It's like, oh huh, wow! I wonder how long those have been there. <laughs> <laughs> if you, anyone's curious, um, trolleys gone wild on Reddit. <laughs> oh, <laughs> figures there's a Reddit for that. <laughs> Another uh, related chairs underwater. Also, mm -hmm. there was um... <laughs> Nathan w took like a week off, and people decided to mess with his chair, and they took <laughs> his chair on a trip around Capitol Park. <laughs> it was on the lift. It was on the roof. Uh, it was in the middle of the road. There was a bus coming. You can see in the picture there was a bus coming up, and the chair was in the middle of the road. <laughs> Basically, that chair went all over Capitol Park, and then they hit it, and they sold it on eBay. They took a screenshot of the um, eBay uh, page, okay, and uh, it was bought by one of the people involved. But uh, yeah, no, that chair went places. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> Were you aware of this? Yeah. Why didn't you drive up the eBay bid? <laughs> Because <laughs> I didn't want to win and have to pay. It's not my problem. My default setting's evil. Um. <laughs> yeah, my default setting is poor. Chaos so. neutral. <laughs> Listen, man, I'm cheap as I can be when it comes to myself, but come on. Live a little. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, uh, I did lay on the floor so they could draw uh, my silhouette in chalk. Mm. So, yeah. <laughs> oh. I would have had the chair like Where the up. chair used to be, there, there was just a silhouette in chalk that happened to be mine. <laughs> you could have it like committing crimes. Assault. Chair assault. <laughs> <laughs> assault and chair. <laughs> All right, let me, uh, a little bio break, and we will. Why are they airtight? They're packed in there with air. This makes no sense. Because <laughs> they don't want you popping it? That's all <laughs> I want to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, I, know, I know it's not packed with nitrogen. Kids also watch out when you're buying cars if they got little um, blue things. It's got nitrogen in the tires. Ask me how I know. Rhymes like that. Ah. <laughs> um, cool. I'll be right back. Then we'll get going. I mean, to be fair, all tires have nitrogen. Like <laughs> Seventy percent of yeah. the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I guess that was easier to say than devoid of oxygen. Oh, okay. <laughs> to be fair. A lot more stable than oxygen, yes. I only put noble gases <laughs> into my tires. Yes, I put xenon in my tires. Wait, doesn't that go on lights? No, shut up. <laughs> Yeah, I gotta ask, um, see if Nathan got any of the, those pictures left. See if you can send them to me, because that was fun. <laughs> that, that sounds like a fun story. <laughs> yeah, it was, um, it was a, a point in time that Nathan was very active in his shenanigans and messing with people. So, mm -hmm. yeah, no, that chair... It went places. <laughs> <laughs> Arthera, I have no idea. Uh, I did manage to get uh, Tomb Raider, Rise of the Tomb Raider, working. All I had to do was uh, delete the old um, folder that 
all feral games create in that local share feral uh, feral interactive there's like mm. w- all of their games that's where all they yeah. all of they them store the, uh, the files yeah. yeah so i just deleted uh, both the f1 and the tomb raider one tomb raider works after i did that so whatever it was it it's cleared out but not f1 that's still showing the same weird vulcan is not supported on this particular configuration error it doesn't mm. do anything which is weird because shadow of the tomb raider also vulcan also works just fine, fine. all the proton oh. games vulcan they work just fine so i have no idea <laughs> I'm half tempted to just, yeah, edit the post and edit uh, add the uh, the graphs without F1 2017 because that's the only one that doesn't work. <laughs> oh boy! And uh, yeah, doing those uh, all of those benchmarks, the 1650 is about 10 to six percent faster than the 1050 Ti. Mm. Come on, Nvidia. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I too have been benchmarking. Yes, you have. I saw the graph. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Sorry, audio nerds. This is what happens when computer nerds have to do a thing. You end up with computer graphs for your audio interfaces. I'm like, hey man, I got numbers. I only yep. know there's only one thing I know to do with numbers is create more graphs. <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> you put them in a spreadsheet. You mm-hmm. select a table. Insert graph. There, done. <laughs> <laughs> I look forward to all the heat mail. You shouldn't do it this way. <laughs> That's not the way it's supposed to be done. <laughs> oh man. The hate I'm opening myself up to is going to be delicious. <laughs> yes. Yummy. I mean, I triggered someone with the Steam box because apparently it was too expensive and they didn't see the point. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I can only imagine what all the audio files are going to have to say. <laughs> <laughs> nice, Steve husband. <laughs> oh, is District 9 coming back? <laughs> Well, at least the fir- I'm not opening the first video with an audio interface that, from a company, the internet loves to hate. Behringer. <laughs> so it's not a Behringer, yeah. gotcha. <laughs> totally doing the first one with a Behringer. <laughs> and saying it is the most stable one I've ever used. <laughs> Which is a true story. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Locked in mode and let's check our shots. Um, <laughs> we got credits. We got that. We got a video. We have browser. All right. <laughs> Safety checks. The one time I don't do that, something's not going to be loaded. <laughs> it's okay. You're just going to hit the wrong button anyway, so people aren't going to see it. <laughs> I've gotten pretty good at hitting Aww. buttons that don't exist, man. Just a flat piece of glass. <laughs> you know, I'm getting like the spatial location of like, yeah, that's there. Muscle memory. I don't even think you can call it that. Oh, more in muscle memory in a moment. Um, mm. And welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we sit back, relax, take that Hello. midweek break, talk about the fun things that we found personally going on and stories that interest us that happen to include Linux, open source, and other fun things. I am Vince Stone, joining us from Los Angeles, uh, that is Jill <laughs> Bryant, in her new pink shirt, Penguin Flavored. Yes. Look at it. Yes. It's Use pink. me, Penguin. Merch. 
Oh, that poor, LDC poor pig one. <laughs> Things. And from the Isles of Britannia, you know him, you love him from the Saturday show and all. all oh, no, no more Morrowind adventures. Uh, no more Morrowind adventures. <laughs> no. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Pedro Mateus. Um, everybody join us live. And what's up? Uh, as always, fair warning, we try not to put you to sleep during the show, so there may be jokes and attempts at humor. Oh, no. <laughs> yes. Be very afraid. Uh, Jill, what's oh, new with you, you, man? Oh, gosh. Still doing more Linux GameCast at, at Scale Prep. And, uh, in fact, we're having our LGC party this Saturday, and it's also uh, Scale Prep as well. <laughs> so that's uh, it's a lot of organization. And I just wanted to remind everyone again that they can use the Linux Chicks LA booth promo code, capital C H I X during scale 18x registration for 50 percent off so i figured i'd I, i'd put that out out there every week up until scale or every lww up until scale <laughs> marketing yeah <laughs> <laughs> but pedro your moral wind adventure has finally come to an end yes uh, we finished the uh the main quest uh yesterday so go watch that stream it it was about 20 hours worth of uh, streams, which is uh, pretty good, especially considering mm. I, don't, I, th I think that was the fastest I've ever finished that game, because mm. it usually takes me several years to actually finish the, uh, the main quest. <laughs> <laughs> You're so focused. <laughs> I would say, you know, with like speedrunning, but then again, I saw somebody speedrun Darkest Dungeons. It's like, okay, fine. I guess you can just yep. do anything. Um, <laughs> <laughs> And you can actually speedrun uh, Morrowind. Uh, I remember back in the day when speedruns were starting to become like widely known, someone managed to finish it in like 20 minutes. And I'm like, 20 minutes? How to? Oh. Mm. Yeah. You can do it in 20 <laughs> yeah, minutes. Like... Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, I've definitely seen some of the game breaking hilarity, man. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. That's kind of neat, man. <laughs> uh, dude, a couple updates. Uh, you will notice. Um, if you're listening to the show in your RSS feed, there's now this new fancy technology called timestamps and um, show links because I now have an, mm -hmm. the ability to include that. Yay. Finally, the mm -hmm. way our old system worked was this is to just grab the show description. So if I dumped all that in there, it would have messed up all the other RSS feeds. So I'm really happy about that. And I finished a video about uh, Mr. Mackey, the uh, mm -hmm. Christmas mixer. Well, Christmas control surface that I got for $89 and the experiments and things that I've done with it and whether or not it was it turned out ultimately to be compatible with Adore and Linux in general, being just a, you know, a 19 year old MIDI device that does a bunch of cool stuff. That video is up for patrons. And one last bit of housekeeping before we get to the shenanigans is, you know, Last week, I told everyone, I'm like, yo, send me your audio stuff because I'm going to start cataloging, benchmarking, and putting in a legitimate current database for audio interfaces under Linux and whether or not they work. And just out of pocket, I'm going through eBay and just picking up anything and everything I can get my hands on. Uh, I said, yo, if you've got anything that you want to throw away, that you want to toss, that would end up in a landfill or in a closet, and then you're, you know, whoever has to, like get your stuff after you're gone. Uh, send it to me. You know, just throw it in my direction, and we'll put it to good use. Got a little bit of feedback for that. I think six, <laughs> you know, seven, if you count the one person that was straight up just trying to sell me stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that clearly had not been to eBay, and I'm like, the reason I'm saying toss this stuff, go to eBay. That's like a seven dollar product, man. I can get that all day on eBay for seven dollars. That's shipping included, and I'm not. No, not, not $500, man. It's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. But a lot mm -hmm. of people took that as an invitation, which is totally cool. Thanks for your feedback. Or uh, letting me know if, like, this is all the audio stuff I have. Isn't that neat? And I'm like, yeah, it's, it's neat. And, but, <laughs> like, okay. Uh, <laughs> did have a couple people like, I could ship you this, and you can ship it back. And, like, by the time we do the shipping back and forth, I could have just bought it off, off eBay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So I have updated the things to try to make it a little, a little simpler. Uh, if you go to our contact page, there's a link that's just got um, our PO box shipping information with a list of some of the stuff I'm on lookout for, especially like Motu stuff, because that's always been squirrely under Linux. And 
It is murky and unclear what works and what does not in 2020, and I want to get that sorted. But I'm almost done with the Behringer FCA 1616. Then we're going to move on to that, to either the Digirac 003, and to the newest edition is the PreSonus Fire Studio 26 by 26. Mm. So that's good. That's going to be fun. Also, nice. my fingers, my fingers hurt. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> because part of testing is like these interfaces is like, mm -hmm. can they guitar? Can you just use them as a direct DI box? I had to put strings on a guitar and plug it in and then like, ow. Oh. So <laughs> dealing with that, man. I haven't haven't like seriously played a guitar for any amount of time in like a decade. So that that's interesting. It that's kind of sad. I think I even have a video of like 30 minutes of me angrily <laughs> staring at the guitar going, what's wrong with me? Because, Aww. you know, the brain kind of remembers how to do stuff and the muscle memory is like, I vaguely remember how to do this. It's like, work. And it didn't. It was kind of hilarious. <laughs> kind of hilarious if you like really sad old men trying things. So, <laughs> on that <laughs> upbeat note, let's get into the yes. base station. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> The Think Station P520. Yeah. It's uh it's available. You can build your own with Windows only, starting at uh twelve hundred and fifty bucks. But uh if you are an AI developer, or at least that seems to be what uh, Lenovo is marketing that Think Station to uh towards, mm. it you can get yourself some Ubuntu Linux with the NVIDIA Rapids. Uh, and it's, um, yeah, it, it starts out the cheapest model at $4,719, with the high-end uh, model going up to $5,859. So, uh... Those, dollars uh, again. You sound like the uh, newscaster. <laughs> You're like, oh, and well, you know, on a family guy, <laughs> we have that cadence of like, and the thing... Yeah, what I'm thinking is, why is the Linux version four thousand seven hundred and nineteen dollars? That it, it, mm -hmm. um, you'd think that you know the whole build your own thing would let you choose your operating system. Mm -hmm. Nope, mm -mm. you got to pay extra for awesome. <laughs> so, yes. Yeah, apparently <laughs> an extra three thousand five hundred pounds. <laughs> I don't know, man. My first thought when I saw that, because we, uh, what was it, last week we talked about the System 76 or the week before when they uh, were rolling out their new thread ripping systems. Yeah. And um, that's where I would go. But then again, one of the very unfortunate things if you're stuck working in corporate um, anywhere, really, is like we yeah. can buy Dell or maybe you might be buying this. And you're like, oh, I'm trying to get a PO approved for System 70. Who? Never heard of them. No, get another Dell. <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of sad only to see Xeon options. I was like, ah, boo. Yeah. 2020. But I guess that's still going to be a thing for a long time, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, and you Xeon can get the 5, 10 core one, I guess. Yeah. And ZF, Xeon 5 <laughs> uh, cards are still very popular. <laughs> so, so you can pop one of those in. <laughs> but, I, you know, I think this is really great that Lenovo is following suit with the likes of Dell. It, it, it's time now that Linux has become a first-class citizen. So that's awesome. It always was on the server side. Now it is on, on you know, your content creation and cloud infrastructure and, and visual effects. So, yeah, this, this is exciting news. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's still cheaper than a Mac Pro. So yes, that. yes. <laughs> that's not saying much. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I can't hear you over the sixty thousand dollars. Yeah, Dude, I get it. Okay, I have to give you credit, Apple. You genuinely took the new Mac Pro, turned it sideways, and put rails on it, and charged another two grand. Just yep. That yeah. that is. You want the four U version? That's so evil. It's almost beautiful. Um, <laughs> And the thousand dollar monitor stand. <laughs> that didn't surprise me so much from Apple. It's yeah. like, yeah, that sounds yeah. very Apple-y. The um, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the, the sideways rack, um, the racks. It's like, wow. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. That's beautiful. Mount, 
<laughs> but hey, man, if you get one of those new fancy jobs from the um, Thunderbird people, yeah. maybe you can afford it. Oh, this is awesome. So Thunderbird is hiring. And like we talked about in January, Thunderbird has moved to its own subsidiary of Mozilla, MZLA Technologies Corporation. And actually, this has allowed them to hire and innovate, you know, more quickly and easily. And as a result, Thunderbird is hiring several engineering positions, uh, release engineer, several senior software engineers, etc. So, you know, go check that out. And you know, see and go ahead and apply and make sure to give them a cover letter and that they requested that. And this is really, really awesome because we were so worried about the future of Thunderbird. And now this solidifies they're doing well in hiring. So this is really great. Things were looking grim for the chicken for a while there, but uh, <laughs> yes. it's one of the things that I'm very glad to see. It, oh, look, an actual development structure. Yes. Please. Oh, God. Please, yeah. more. <laughs> <laughs> That's not too bad. I mean, you just get to send a resume um, to jobs at thunderbird.net. Uh, please mm -hmm. take the title of the position. <laughs> okay. More on it. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I delete exploit of dare you. Um, yes. There's lots of that? engineering <laughs> positions. <laughs> that That's always good. I would like to see I don't, I don't know where this would fall but please for the love of flying spaghetti monster can we get an updated spiel checking system <laughs> because the spell check database for thunderbird i don't think has advanced uh -huh. since like 2005 like very <laughs> regular common words of like shrug emoji i don't know what this is and i'm like come on yeah. you're messing with me at least it supports mm -hmm. emojis so there's that there's that. And uh, maybe, <laughs> yeah. just maybe, we'll eventually get a dark theme that is completely dark. Yes. Without, like dark, 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 blinding white. Um, dark, mm -hmm. dark, 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 dark. Mm -hmm. So looking forward to that. Good to know. Um, mm -hmm. On the lookout. Send those emails to him. Uh, what do we have? Mm -hmm. Up oh, no. Bad news. Water Fox. Yes. Water Fox. What happened, man? You used to be cool. Um uh, <laughs> <laughs> system Did it? One. Yes. Well, we'll, we'll yes. get to that. Uh, system One's like, yo, we're excited to announce that we've acquired the web browser Waterfox. To which you may very rightfully go, Water what? Which I raise. I'm right there with you. I, I don't even know what this thing was, man. Um, what this boils down to is Waterfox was a privacy focused um, browser developed by one lad all by himself over like the past eight or nine years. There was a nice little blog mm -hmm. post I'm like, yo, this is what I'm thinking about doing. And I wanted to do something with all the tracking and stuff like that. So system one, a little background is like, so what are they about? Well, you can kind of spin this however you want. At the end of the day, system one's an advertising company. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. It, it's got a, <laughs> a lot of nice fluffy flowery things around us. Like, uh -huh. you, you sell ads. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that said, the developer of Waterfox is going to be part of system one now. So he's like, I finally have funding and a development team. So Waterfox yes. can start to grow. So as I, that, that's everyone's dream. If you're just working on a project and, you know, a company rolls in that you can kind of align with because system one's credit, they're like, yo, we, we are very focused on privacy and not like doing all this, like really super sketchy tracking, which isn't saying much. Um, by today's standards, right? But I, I'm still <laughs> going to say, yeah, good on yeah. them. Google's <laughs> like, yeah, whatever. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm really happy to see that because I, I'm just happy for the developer, even though I couldn't tell you what Waterfox is other than like, yeah, that's the thing I didn't know about. Yeah. Well, it's an optimized version of Firefox, of course. <laughs> but actually, um, Waterfox became very popular among my students. All my students in, in my, my class you know, years ago, no, eight years, eight, seven years ago, were uh, starting to use it because it was a very fast alternative to Firefox. And now it has become a very, very privacy con conscious uh, web browser. Um, and it still uses Zool, which is the user interface markup lang language developed by Mozilla, which was dropped in Firefox version 57. So, and it makes plugins really easy to install. And 
you know, I, this, like Ben was saying, system one is, is definitely a, a marketing, um, company. Um, but I did, uh, play around with their, uh, search engine start page, uh, dot com. Um, and I hadn't played around with it in a while. It came from that old search engine called MetaSearch many years ago, and it actually works very well. And I've been actually using it exclusively since Monday just, just to see what it's all about. And so it was good to see, you know, System One is a, um, you know, good company. And it was really good to see that Waterfox is a part of it. So, yeah. That's and awesome. yeah, the, the having your project mm -hmm. be just financially funded by someone else regardless yeah. of how uh you know uh opposite their goals seem to be to yours uh considering how privacy minded mm -hmm. uh water fox is and then you have like advertising company funding it listen but, Pedro, i can change him <laughs> from the inside <laughs> <laughs> yes uh but uh jill brought up at the place is like oh it was very popular eight years ago it's like was <laughs> yeah. it mm -hmm. What was it? Um, yes. And um, I honestly, I couldn't tell you if I'd ever heard of Waterfox, but then I went to LinuxGameCast.com and I hit the search uh, bar and I typed like in Waterfox. <laughs> there was one result. Hey. One result, just a single one. It was mm -hmm. uh, a me and Ven only episode. Okay. And we talked about Waterfox as um, Brave and a couple other mm. browsers that uh weren't working properly with something or someone had dropped support for it i don't even remember clearly that's the thing <laughs> it's so private my memory doesn't even retain <laughs> <it>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, best of luck with it man um you know as somebody running a small business uh our little company here even though we run it as a not-for-profit but i can imagine like the load off your mind and where you're like oh i don't have to worry about getting all the bills paid now neat so i can just focus on like let's go do stuff so good on you mate we'll keep an eye on it hopefully next time we talk about it it won't be doing like digging through a search engine like wait a minute did we yeah <laughs> yes <laughs> remember that thing uh <laughs> let's talk about paint yeah this is awesome Oh, there is a major new release of my paint, my paint 2.0, with lots of new features and That's improvements. That's mainstream. I only cover the minor ones, but go ahead. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so the big deal in this version um, is that it has out of the box support for linear compositing and spectral blending of pigment pigments, which in layman's terms means that it better amoebas. emulates. You can draw amoebas. <laughs> Yeah, it better emulates the use of traditional <laughs> media when creating uh, artwork. So it's more natural as if you were using a, a brush on canvas. And yes, this feature is still a work in progress. And I did notice um, a much slower speed when drawing and that the mouse was delayed when drawing uh, using this new version of My Paint 2.0. Um, but uh, they are they are working on that to improve this still work in progress and what's really great is they included backward compatibility with my paint 1.2 which is a really good thing because uh, the new files uh, my paint 2.0 don't don't work um, with Krita so it was really really good that they included that and I actually always loved uh, using my paint and one of the reasons why is it auto starts with a textured canvas to draw on. So it, it really is just, it's, it's, it's really um, wonderful to use and it feels so natural because they tried to, even the, even the interface is, is similar to kind of your workflow as if you were painting on canvas. So it's really awesome. I'm mean, really excited about it. Pedro, as our <laughs> resident art expert, what are your thoughts? <laughs> what? <laughs> when did that happen? <laughs> I'm down with it, man. I mean, for Linux users, there's an app image. You can go ahead and download it, um, and it should work fine on fairly old systems, like six-year-old systems and new distros. I tested it with a fairly ancient distribution, Debian Buster, which I run. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. 
It's great. Full Python 3 support is in this. Python 2 is still supported, though. You, you still have like another 20 seconds. Keep dreaming. Lots of bugs and crashes and other annoyances have been fixed in this release. And, yes. and the sweetest part, the sweetest part, there's still plenty of input <laughs> issues on Windows, ranging yes. from like offset bugs <laughs> to multiple monitors to pressure not working on certain devices, and generally worse support for some more advanced features like external editing. That first. Um, yes. <laughs> so don't use this on Windows. This is the yes. Of the story. Yeah, I don't think anyone's too worried. Well, Windows users aren't terribly worried about that. Windows users mm -hmm. love free software. They don't like paying for stuff. <laughs> yeah, they don't like free software in the uh, free software foundation definition of it. They like free as in beer software. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I The one they don't pay for, but they would normally have to. Are you accusing yeah. Microsoft Windows users of being... <laughs> Sailors. Pirates, yes. Sailors. Yes, I yes. am. <laughs> Listen, man. Very good. Listen, this is 2020. Sailors. <laughs> sailors. Oh, sorry. My bad. Uh, I, I'm not up with the lingo. So, yeah, yeah sailors. <laughs> Leech the wares, everyone. <laughs> we have a Linux distribution review from Ars Technica. So this, this yeah. should be easy. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> oh, look. Oh, that's cute. Uh, this guy's got to be my age because he tried to make a joke up top that I'd make like an old person. By the way, I use clear. <laughs> <sighs> what is it? It's Boom. a motorbike. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> clear Linux. Clear devices. Linux. <laughs> I was waiting for Jill. She was like, I'm going to stop talking. I can't stop. Okay, go ahead, Ben. <laughs> um, let's rock and roll with this, man. Uh, this is Clear OS. You know what you love it. It's from Intel, and dude looked at it. And he's like, "Hey, man, this is that thing that products benchmarks constantly." He's like, "Look how fast it is. This is what I want to benchmark." So, how is it to live with? Well, kind of walks through what it is like to just get it up, set up, install, dealing with Ufi, and it's like I'm going to use a VM. I'm like that's weird, but okay. A KVM, anyway. And, you know, it's a well enough done review at the end of the day. It's like it's got a little app store, you know, it uses the Gnome app store thing, set it up. Mm -hmm. Nothing new under the sun. I got to see in 2020. I mean, that is a good thing because, okay, it, it wins the benchmarks. But on modern hardware, Linux is Linux, man. I mean, it's simple as that. If you want maximum yeah. compatibility, like, Go get something from Canonical. If you want the new, brand new bleeding hotness, go to Arch. If you want the stability and boringness, get something Debian or synth based. But if you want to go fast, well, get clear. Then you can benchmark things and go, ha, ah, look, numbers. Then you can close your VM and go back to Windows because that's probably what you're doing. Um, th did I miss anything, Pedro? <laughs> Uh, no, no, no. Uh, that 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 is uh, the point of clear. Uh, it is pretty fast, and uh, one of the things they do differently is um, they change the number of defaults in the kernel. And instead of shipping the repositories instead of, instead of just having like packages, you have software bundles that are not containers, but they might as well be. And uh, they do make heavy use of flat packs out of the box. So, um, yeah, it, it is Intel's own vision of like, okay, we just want something to showcase that has a desktop environment and, you know, good on them. Now they actually have a GUI installer. It used to be all command line all the time, but they do have that going on now. And um, the biggest uh, thing that I'm a fan of is the irony because um, Clear Linux, being developed by Intel, of course, happens to run very, very well on Ryzen systems, especially oh, yes. Ryzen laptops. <laughs> it Pedro, runs yeah. very, Pedro. very well. How dare, how, how dare you imply <laughs> that Intel is only creating a super fast Linux version to help make up for the security mitigations required to run modern Intel processors uh, that yes there is that <laughs> how dare you yeah. I mean, they, still, that? Uh, they still recommend that you just straight up nerf um hyper threading so 
<laughs> but, but yeah. If you're running clear Linux, it will, it'll be better. Don't worry. <laughs> it'll be safer than Windows. Uh, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I, I discovered when I installed clear Linux last May for LWW review, how well it worked on AMD hardware, even an old 2013 Len Lenovo ThinkPad, pad, ThinkPad Edge um, laptop with a, a quad core AMD A6 APU, it worked <laughs> beautifully. And even on the on the older Radeon HD graphics, it performed nicely playing games in Steam, 60 frames per second average on medium settings, playing distance. That's really good for a very old laptop. So that, that just, that's, that's proving how beautiful um, Clear Linux is optimized. So these numbers don't surprise me at all. <laughs> and you know the GIMP, uh, Jim Salter, uh, this he wrote this beautiful article, and um, he had noticed that the GIMP would run faster on a native install on Ubuntu, and um, of course that's because uh, uh, Clear Linux usually use flat packs, so it would run slower <laughs> on Clear Linux. And um, I did ag agree with one of the things that, that Jim had to say was the SWUPD uh, council package management tool in clear Linux is very clunky and that's very true. <laughs> yeah, it needs some improvement, but it works. <laughs> so that was awesome. So there you go. If you gotta go fast, use clear Linux. If you need to get <laughs> stuff done, quit this drop and pick one, use it, done. All right. Um, yeah, pretty much. KDE stuff. <laughs> yes. So last week, uh, KDE put out uh, Plasma 5.18, and this week they put out a hotfix. Because as it turns out, 5.18 was a bit buggy. Shocker. KDE, uh, what? And... <laughs> no. It never breaks. It only yeah. took them like 16 releases of the 5.0 series, but we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about the new version, which uh, they did actually change a number of things, and... Uh, as the resident KD Neon user, right here on this very box. Um, it it was nice to see. I came home today, I turned on this PC, it's like, oh, there we go. There's the um the hotfix. Installed it, I ran it, uh 518.1. And it's yeah, I didn't actually notice any issues with 518. I guess I got lucky with that. Uh, but 518.1 is also working pretty well. I did run the um what was mm. it, superposition in heaven. Um I mean, I'm still getting like 10,000 something points on uh, superposition uh, 1080p high mm -hmm. and over 118 uh, frames per second on heaven extreme. So no, it's 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 running. It it's it's working. There's a bunch of new stuff and a bunch of bug fixes. Is, but it, yeah, I, is that something <laughs> you tend to look for in a desktop manager? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Something that runs and you don't actually think about, which I started to notice with the last few releases of KDE. I don't think about it all that much. The features that I want are there and I can make use of them mm. and it doesn't crash stupidly mm. anymore. Like it used to. I wonder if that <laughs> NVIDIA patch had something to do with it. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Well, you know, I had seen lots of complaints <laughs> about about uh, Wayland using Plasma. And so now Plasma no longer crashes when you switch virtual desktops after changing the layout on Wayland. Very important. And the mouse input in GTK apps using X Wayland now works properly. Before, um, with this bug, when you clicked on, click the mouse on the close min max button, nothing would happen because the clicks would land somewhere else. <laughs> So that was pretty bad bug, even for Wayland. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and I was really happy about this one. Um, I missed this last time I was using Plasma is that Dolphin has the create new folder and text files, etc. back at the top in the context menu. Oh, so that, that, that was makes... very much appreciated. Yes, um... <laughs> that was so annoying. <laughs> Not having that. It's there. like, why did you move it to halfway down? Half down. I mean, yeah. put it at the bottom. Sure, leave it at the top like it was. Great. Yeah. Why did you move it halfway down? I why? Know. <laughs> Something you have to use all UX the time. Design, man. You just don't understand. It's it's beyond your primitive comprehension, peasant. Clearly. 
<laughs> maybe maybe they wanted to confuse the end user. Maybe they were taking uh, notes from the GNOME project. <laughs> don't give uh, them ideas. Yeah, just no. don't. Oh, <laughs> just don't. No. <laughs> Say something else and I'll remove another option. <laughs> Go back to Unity, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, keep giving them ideas, Jill. Come yeah, on. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, big new Blender release. Yay! Blender 2.82 has a lot of new updates and features, including a new Manta flow system for creating fire and smoke effects, a new combustion system. And they improved cloth simulations and the sculpting and grease pencil tools i use some of the sculpting tools and they're so much more precise now they that worked that works really really well and what's also major about this release is it includes um, the new ai accelerated denoiser from optics for nvidia rtx gpus which features faster renders with multiple cpus and corrects texture and lighting issues and renders using the cycles renderer. So that that was major. We had talked about it here on LWW and it's nice now that it's fully Pedro, integrated <laughs> Pedro, into Blender. Um, on a scale of one to four, what do you rate that elk? <laughs> it's certainly no hell elk, but uh, it, it's getting there. I'll give, I'll give it yeah. two cheers. I mean, uh, the, one of the new things about the new version of um, 282 is the improved uh, fire <laughs> and smoke effects. So that can totally become a hell elk very, very quickly. Yes. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah. And so another really important thing about this release is that it now supports Pixar's very own open source universal scene description configuration files which is actually huge for the industry. That's that's a way, configuration files, that you can move your assets and all your settings from one program to the next without them uh, uh, not needing to reconfigure them. And that's huge. That saves hours, hours and hours of time. But <laughs> we have to talk about the killer feature, the one that will finally bring <laughs> Blender usage to the masses, mainstream, replacing anything and everything and that's mm -hmm. the ability to simulate balloons and cushions with ease. Yeah. <laughs> yes <laughs> internal air pressure they were very proud about uh, about that <laughs> Not just yes balloons. yes no no and... no gone are the days of like oh proprietary cushion inflation software nay yeah welcome to 2020 well, you no longer need you to pay nvidia and for uh, cushion fx I'm telling you man. yeah <laughs> well, another significant thing about this is that you're no longer you don't have to bring in plugins to do those functions. A lot of the 3D programs to do um, cloth and um, <laughs> to make cushions, you have to bring in plugins for oh, that. I'm, so no, no, now no, it's... I'm talking about cushion inflation. <laughs> oh, mm -hmm. for yeah. inflating cushions. Mm -hmm. Yes, <laughs> air pressure effects. Well, Foxy in chat was playing a lot with that as well. Part of me wants to believe that that's really a legitimate issue, but the other part is like somebody on the team is winning a bet by getting that in the. Um... I can get that merged into He's master. Like, I'll yeah, bet you ten bucks. I can get that merged into like, master. Make this a highlighted feature. <laughs> yes. I want to believe some shutters been spent them for that little note. And he's like, and I created a little animated um, gift for you. There you go, cushion and fishing. There you go. Yeah. Showcase. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, all of you are beautiful, and if you, we would like to uh, enjoy our showcase that we put on each and every week on Wednesdays. Uh, we start on Tuesdays with Pedro when he's like hanging out in Morrowind, uh, which would be no longer. He'll be up to other crazy stuff next week. We have this show Thursday. Jordan does the thing all the way from Space Canada. Friday, I usually, it's like watching a poorly trained AI. Um, we do that. And last uh, month of the, last month, last week, Friday of the month, we do Friday <laughs> Night Fubar. And uh, that's where we invite everybody to come hang out with us and we play trivia and Yay. stuff like that. And Saturday, we do the big show. That's Linux Gamecast Weekly. That's been going strong for coming up on eight years, man. That is, uh, we predate Steam on Linux. So if you've ever mm -hmm. been curious about the Linux and the gamings, come hang out with us live, man. Uh, that starts at 8.30 Eastern time. We do that on Twitch podcasts. That's where most people catch it. And it's also available on YouTube. But 
if all that sounds like awesome, you're like, that's cool, man. I want to hang out with you guys constantly, and I'd like to support mm -hmm. you. Well, you can quit sending Pedro inflatable life-size <laughs> Antonio Banderas blow-up dolls. He's got too many. <laughs> Nori's starting to be like, enough. I get the joke. It's not funny. It is a pretty tiny apartment, so yeah, I have to keep them deflated a lot. <laughs> oh, well, Pedro doesn't need one. He has a girlfriend. <laughs> Nori is no Antonio Banderas. <laughs> Antonio Banderas is no Nori. Isn't that right, Nick? <laughs> <laughs> Just in case she's listening. <laughs> good call good call um if you want to support what our fine upstanding uh whatever that just was uh, you can do that a bunch of ways we have a support button we have patreon we have libra pay merch paypal wishlist bitcoin we take magic internet money that's a brilliant thing best way to do it's patreon.com forward slash linux teamcast we have a bunch of membership levels that uh get you a gang of different rewards that you can cash in and be like, give me something in return for making this happen, <laughs> becoming your boss, which we will do. Um, one of my favorite things is everyone who hangs out in our Discord. That's going to hold away. We get getting people in there and we get to chit and chat and all that fun stuff. And you get the audio only versions of these shows and the pre-pre super shows an hour early. So yeah, you can come in there on uh, Saturdays and like, hey, we do our little production meeting and we invite everybody to come take part in that. That's also in podcast form. You get a little custom RSS mm -hmm. feed as a patron. Mm -hmm. And some early access. I'm going to be dropping these um, interface reviews on you poor unsuspecting unsus people making this stuff possible. Like, what do you think? All right, give me some thoughts. Give me some ideas because I'm creating something new from whole cloth. And this is like definitely going through the feedback section before we dump it on the public so they can be like you've done everything wrong but like i've crossed all the t's and dotted all the lowercase g's deal with it um what else what else do we have mm. oh, oh we have some patrons to thank as well <laughs> we do have some merch we have some t-shirts that's kind of brilliant we got some mugs stickers uh we got wish I list guess. if you want to get your name mm -hmm. back here where it's blinking next to frank and linus and of course nick uh, anything else? Okay, now, Jill, what are you saying? <laughs> yeah. So, th <laughs> welcome back, Drummer, as an executive producer. Thank you so much. We we love Drummer in chat, and so happy to have him back. And thank you to George for increasing your pledge. Uh, we love you all, and it's it's amazing. It's just amazing that you help fund this our shows. <laughs> thank you so much. And, and Pedro yes, didn't write uh, anything down, but he's got a whole. <laughs> no, chunk no, I, I totally forgot. But yeah, I su I do still need to thank um, Artharin right here on LWDW because uh, he oh, bought yes. me a bunch of things on the uh, <laughs> on my uh, Amazon wish list, including a remote power on power off button that is currently in the Steam box, a uh, by sixteen four um, X M dot two NVMe uh, PCIe card. Nice. I still need three more NVMe drives in there to uh, slot it in, but he, well, and of course, the beautiful, beautiful uh, Nicholas Cage poster, and he says, hey, Pedro, would you be so kind and test this car thingamajig um, before I buy one for myself? Thanks much. With love. No homo. Artharin. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so I get to play guinea pig, although that's a pretty weird way to get, you know, testing hardware it's costing you double the money what are you doing i appreciate it anyway thank you that's because you're everyone's favorite giddy pig oh <laughs> no 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 i said giddy and i said pig <laughs> no jill is dressed in pink oink, oink. you're sitting on a pink chair what are you talking about <laughs> That's exactly what I would expect a giddy pig to say. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Verbatim. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's have some giddy pie. Yay! Mm. Oh, kawaii pie. pie. 
<laughs> and yeah, the first one is proper hipster. Uh, <laughs> someone decided, you know what? Remember those old flip clocks? What gave it away? The color? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, let's make one of them flip clocks with um, a uh, weather display and an FM um, radio tuner because it has to be realistic and mm-hmm. a, uh, a Spotify, uh, just Spotify integration because, yep. And that little uh, black bar that they have on top, if you have a look at the article or if you happen to be looking at the video version, uh, there's a... Um, a little black bar at the top. That's actually the snooze button. Of course, it's like, got RGBs. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's just some sort of feedback uh, because I'm guessing the um, the volume knob doesn't click. Okay, the one on all the that far much. right is changing between sun, stars, yeah. clouds. Now, does it have a sandwich and or chicken leg? Yes. I'm pretty sure <laughs> those would be <laughs> no. very difficult to add. <laughs> no. But yeah, no, the far right one is actually the weather display. It yeah, uh, syncs awesome. up, it has a little Raspberry Pi as the brains, and it drives the mm-hmm. FM tuner at Spotify, obviously. You kind of need something to drive Spotify. Uh, and yeah, the uh, flip time and the little weather display, uh, the Raspberry Pi controls all of that, which is awesome. That is amazing that mm-hmm. that that's like proper hipster stuff and you know after you send everything down all the 3d printed parts you send it all down that has a very high tsa acceptance factor yeah it's tsa that's... af i don't know you might want to print some side burdens <laughs> on it <laughs> maybe or, or maybe give it some fake wood paneling <laughs> I know yeah, Steve you could totally been... <laughs> just wrap it in uh, <laughs> yeah. wood grain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Steve husband would love this because he loves flippy clocks. He still uses one. <laughs> he still has one on this on the side of his bed. <laughs> yeah, I, I like my time. You know, it's a nice, smooth, warm time. <laughs> analog feel I like to hear the click as uh, the thing mm-hmm. folds over <laughs> Did, uh, no yeah Aww. I have no idea I never had one of these so I have no idea I have a Nixie tube clock <laughs> my mom had one of those oh yeah yeah they That's burned out <laughs> oh no it's not put together but I have it oh <laughs> I'm not pretentious enough to set it up <laughs> <laughs> this is neat, though. This is something you can do at home and play around with it. Very, uh-huh. very cool. Happy to see it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This, however, this is the pea mass. Yes. <laughs> no. Pi P. Yeah. Pi mass, not pea mass. Penis. Pi mass. I wasn't gonna say it. You just did, Brad. You just did. <laughs> The features of this penis is it's super small. Um, <laughs> simple setup, cheap. <laughs> hey man, it includes Wi-Fi and uh, easy to open case. If you like your penis, check out my page. All right. <laughs> so we just made that wholly inappropriate. What is this, Pedro? <laughs> I'm sorry, we didn't do anything. That's literally what they called it. Mm. <laughs> Say, man. It's pronounced sailor. <laughs> you mentioned that earlier. Yeah. Dude, this Aww. is actually really cool. This is a, it's awesome. I mean, it, it's your same take on like, hey, we got a pie and we're going to make a NAS with it. But this is more about the 3D printed case that's around it that looks like uh, little sandwich holders that you could just mm-hmm. slot the drives right into. Just like. That's actually a clever idea. I know. It only, it's like, like Ven was saying, easy to open and it actually only needs four bolts and four parts printed. That's that's amazing. Very USB well done. USB to, well, if you get a Pi 4, you actually, you legitimately get USB 3, right? So, yep. Mm, mm-hmm. I mean, that's a better type of cancer. <laughs> <laughs> you can actually get uh, off of, USB 3 is like 300 and something or 400 and something megabytes per second. So mm-hmm. you could totally drive three or four uh, two and a half inch hard drives 
It's Without very important to, to wash your pine ass. Yes. <laughs> yes. Watch your pine ass. No one likes a dirty pine <laughs> And your pineapples, if you're going to eat them. Uh, but... <laughs> Yeah, no, it, this is absolutely something that I am very, very, very much um, pondering whether or not to build because I have like 10 two and a half inch laptop hard drives and I have uh, the Raspberry Pi 4 uh, B and the Raspberry Pi 3 A plus. So I might nice. use the A plus just because that one's now that I have the four to play around with, I might just yeah. use the A plus and just usb hub all the things and away we go it really sounds good <laughs> it's probably a good thing you don't get the internal monologue that just is like we need a laser cut i'm like no because that's all you'll do you'll just write pine ass on everything maybe <laughs> 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 no i just write the pen is mightier than the sword in a font that has really bad um kerning hmm. clean enough <laughs> okay that's gonna do it we're going to get out of here. I'm not, not going to say we're going to quit while we're ahead, but we're going to quit before we break out a new shovel. Um, Pedro, if you want to get a hold to us, how can they do it? Maybe they want to share pics mm -hmm. of their pine ass. Yes. Yeah. If you did build yourself a pine ass, uh, let us know and go to linksgamecast.com, hit the contact button and include links to your pictures uh, after you fill in the form correctly. It It's really not that hard if you're sending some feedback for LWDW. Make sure that is the show that you pick on the show box, and that's it. You just send us your message, and if we like your pine ass, uh, we will be very happy to feature it right here, right now, and put it on display on the internet. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. All right. Yeah. Until <laughs> next week, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to roll some credits as I yeah. carefully dig around. Nope. Wrong, yeah. wrong show. How about that? <laughs> and yeah. welcome back <laughs> there to we go. Linux game cast weekly. <laughs> ha. Yay. <laughs> Unsol unsolicited pine ass. Ha. Yes. <laughs> I had to say that because it's going to be the show title. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah, there was a lot of pine ass. <laughs> yes, there's another way it can be said, but I don't want to say that here. <laughs> <laughs> Is it the way you said it during the show? <laughs> no! <laughs> See, it doesn't work when you're like, that, that didn't happen. I'm like, just got it recorded, man. <laughs> uh, pin. You know, pin. Jill, you, yeah. Jill, yeah. Jill, you straight up said penis in the middle of the show. <laughs> I'm gonna have to go back and bleep that out. Not me, not Pedro, you. Ah, because you're a monster. <laughs> That was a very good pun. It just came out because when I saw it in the show notes Too a easy. couple days, it's gonna when, it, when it was named it. You know, you can't really use the easy. that's what she said joke when it was literally what Jill said. I honestly, I could have, I was already unlocking the advanced weaponry cabinet. And I was like, you know what, this is a Wednesday. We're not going to do this. Um, uh, Yes, Katana, that's it. <laughs> that's the other one. Hey, we made one piece. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, man, I should have that on during the... Uh, maybe I'll go back and... Oh, yeah, that's right. Multi-track recording, baby. Guess what's going to be over the pine ass <laughs> segment. <laughs> <laughs> Sweetheart, if you um, hyperventilate and kill over, at least we'll have it on tape. <laughs> yeah, that's not helping. Oh I was talking to you, Pedro. <laughs> like I said, that's not helping. <laughs> Yo.
yes, Steve, when you get home, you better bring it. <laughs> I don't know what you guys are talking about, perverts. <laughs> no idea. None this is whatsoever. a family show. Right? <laughs> I'm surrounded by people with sick minds. <laughs> Ah. Also, Gibson, <laughs> I don't understand why you have airtight strings packaging. You're just trapping the air in there. <laughs> also, Amazon, I also don't understand why you don't stock blue steels. I mean, most of the most of the time, whenever something is not Amazon, is because that brand wanted a different deal with Amazon, and they wouldn't give it to them, so they went, they, "No." <laughs> oh my gosh! Thank well, you. Like... To... <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh no! <laughs> I'm sorry. The um. I typically don't buy like name brand like Gibson or Fender or anything like that. I get the blue steels not because they're all they're cryogenically activated. It's simply because of um, they last. They don't rust. I mean, they will eventually, but not. Like, you can set them and forget them. Be like, oh, I haven't picked this up in six months, and <laughs> I have nylons on my washburn. And I don't play it. That's like a water spray to me, man. Classical <laughs> nylon strings. I'm like, eh. Wrong. Pedro, what are your preferred string gauge? I mean, do you like extra lights, heavies, medium guy? Who are you talking to? <laughs> 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 you. I keep looking behind me to make sure there's no one else there. It's like, uh. eh? <laughs> Listen, I knew you weren't clever when I invited you on the show, but I am perpetually filled with hope and faith. Okay. Uh, one, sounds one, like a personal problem. One day you're going to surprise me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When that ha when that day happens, I'm gonna need you to I don't know call the police mm -hmm. or something because something's happened. Oh, listen, okay. I, I, <laughs> I'm not saying an aneurysm live wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could still totally call um nine nine nine. Nope. <laughs> I'm let or Nori find out this here. <laughs> I'm gonna leave the leave it on to it. Was gonna put text. I was like, I could have notified you, Nori. He could have been saved. But this one time, you get on my nerves a little bit. <laughs> so, uh, no. See, um, my mom had a um, four string bass that I doodled. Literally, I doodled. I did. I phrasing. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I said doodle, <laughs> not diddle. Um, the guitar that I bought for Nori, um, sometimes I sit down and I doodle on that too. But that that's it. That That is my experience. <laughs> it's a drawing, yes. <laughs> yeah, I've only ever played urban. with acoustic <laughs> guitars. Mm -hmm. Isn't it the pancake one? I don't know. We're about to find out. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so That's the pine ass. You used to pine ass your mom's bass. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> do, do, do. <clears throat> You slap a bass. You slap the doodle. <laughs> slap a doodle. 
<laughs> hey, Homer. I can see your doodle. <laughs> Do, 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 do. I was so bored at work today, I just burned time doodling caricatures of my mm. colleagues. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> caricatures? Okay. <laughs> That's what that says. I'm just reading. What? <laughs> oh, um, Mr. Daylight. Yeah, he had a question. Which photo editor is best with a touch pen on Linux? And my paint is actually very, very good, but Krita photo is Photo editor good. with a touch pen? Wrong tool for the job. Well, it's... Y you can use, you know, use the... Oh, you could? Yeah, <laughs> you could use a steam too. controller if you wanted to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think yeah. that, I don't not think the right tool for the job. <laughs> Let me see where did it go. You know, it's been a while since I've stabbed myself with guitar strings. That was another experience mm. from yesterday. <laughs> um, like our Theron was saying, Krita or Gimp or PhotoP is another really good one that works well with the tablets. You're. Probably going to have a hard time with pressures, uh, pressure levels in Photo P, but uh, yeah, but it, it works does in work. Gimp. Yeah, <laughs> it does actually it works remarkably well in Photo P. All right, maybe it's just yeah. my experience with Firefox. Maybe Chrome does it better. Oh, but, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I found that Chrome or Vivaldi was better for that. Krita, Krita is pretty good. If you are into illustration and you're not too finicky about the UI not having everything in the exact same place as Illustrator, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, Photo Paint is one of the best, honestly. <laughs> That's what it's made for, and that and that was one of the reasons why they even um, created that project was so that we'd have a, a better program that would work with the the bamboos and Everything. the lights. Yeah. <laughs> Oof! I get to make. Who wants to test data for me tonight? Oh. No. Uh -huh. <laughs> In fact, I, I need to be going quickly because uh, Nori has asked me if I could wrap up earlier than usual. Because <laughs> oh, she's okay. still got stuff to do and she needs my help, so. With what? University stuff. Be more vague, I dare you. <laughs> I don't know what she's doing. She just said she needed my help. It's like, can you wrap up early? You're like, you yeah. fool. You. <laughs> I'm trying to help. I'm, try I'm trying to save you, man. <laughs> That's fine. I don't mind helping her. <laughs> the my inner calamari. As long as she doesn't ask me to draw anything, we're good. That just <laughs> triggered my inner calamari, in, dude. <laughs> I'm calling an Akbar on that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Many Bothans died to bring us this information. <laughs> I said, "Add some Bothans for coffee." All dead. Every single one. <laughs> <laughs> Aww. All right. Do you have any final words, Jill? No. Oh. Love you all. <laughs> no, come on, be honest. <laughs> oh, I love, I love everyone. I love Patrick. I love Katana Steel. So happy I'm gonna get to see you soon. At scale, I'm gonna see Patrick on Saturday. And I love Pedro. And tell Nori hello for me, Pedro. I will. Aww. <laughs> and uh, I'm still waiting for that um, uh, degree in journalism diploma from the University yeah. of Jill. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the, the, yes, that's the degree of journalism diploma. You should have one of those made up. 
Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we'll put it like a little gold star on the bottom so people know it's official. Gold Aww. star. Gold star. It was clearly drawn in crayon. Dude, yes. gold star and some glitter. <laughs> I'll put it on your CV. I'll create the site. I'll see if I can get hold of an EDU. Aww. <laughs> That'll be great. Let's see if I can do it in my VB script. <laughs> Uh, It'll be great. Love it. All right, beautiful people. We're going to bounce out of here. See you next week. Bye. Okay, <laughs> bye bye, everyone.